Dear friends, grace, peace, mercy, forgiveness, healing, love to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what brings you here today? You know, you could be doing a whole lot of other things. It's a beautiful day. Look at this outside. You could be outside. Uh, there's a Packer game going on right now. Of course, maybe that's why you're here, so you can avoid watching the Packers. I say that as a Packer fan, by the way. There are so many things that you could be doing. Why are you here? What brings you here? Maybe it's this beautiful space, this beautiful sanctuary in this beautiful building with the natural light pouring in. Maybe it's the great music that, that we get to experience every week in worship, either to listen to or to sing these beautiful hymns. Maybe it's the beauty of the liturgy and the movement of the liturgy. Maybe it's just being together. You know, dear friends, people you've known forever, family, and it really is true. There is this significant importance of being together. We need each other if that isn't uh, quite evident, you know, in these years of pandemic. I don't know what is. And those of you who are online this morning, thank you for being here with us. And the same question applies to you. Why are you here this morning? Maybe it's habit. You know, years and decades and years of coming to church because that's just what I do. Kids, maybe you're here because your parents made you come here. That's okay, too. There are so many things that bring us here. But my friends, what else do you need? What do you hope to find here that is hard to find in other places? Maybe you're here to hear God's word read and proclaimed and to connect the story of God and Jesus Christ to your life. Maybe you're here to experience the very real presence of Jesus Christ in that word and in this Holy Supper that we partake of weekly. Maybe you are here to hear words of forgiveness spoken not just generally, but specifically to you, to know that you are forgiven. Maybe you're here to pray, to pray for all that is going on in this world, in our lives, to pray for people who are close to you, who are hurting. Maybe you're here to be accepted for who you are instead of being excluded because of who you are not. Maybe a need for healing brings you here, that there's things going on in your life and you need the presence of healing, the healing touch of a loving God who is a God of mercy. Maybe that need helps you resonate with what the lepers cry out. Jesus, Master, have mercy. In Jesus' time, lepers were considered unclean. And they were forced to live separately from others. From family and friends, let alone being any part of society. And when coming close to others, the lepers were to cry out, Unclean! to make sure that others knew who they were and what they were suffering and to warn other people to keep their distance. But as Jesus enters this village, the lepers approach him and they cry out, not unclean, but Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And you know, previously in Luke, Jesus has healed people, including other lepers, another leper, and it usually involved a touch. But now Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, simply says, go show yourselves to the priest, and the lepers are healed. They start walking away, but one, who is an outsider, a Samaritan, realizes 
that he is healed, and he returns to give thanks. He remembers just who it is who had mercy, who had healed him, who had given him a new life, free of illness, free of the label of being unclean. My friends, maybe you are here today to remember, to give thanks to God who is mercy, who brings forgiveness, and who in Jesus is life. In our reading uh, from 2 Timothy, Paul encourages Timothy and all of us when he says this, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, Descendant of David, that is my gospel. Remember Jesus Christ. Will Williman, who is an amazing preacher and scholar, says this about this text. He writes, Remember Jesus Christ. The Christian faith is distinctly traditionalist. Much of our worship on Sunday is consumed with the loving reiteration and joyful celebration of tradition remembering Jesus Christ. And here you are, studying a 2,000-year-old letter. That's the way we Christians continue as Christians. Our remembering of the tradition is our revolutionary act of defiance against the lures of the present age, one of our most significant practices of the faith. Through such remembering, we are freed from the mere contemporary In our reading and studying of the Word of God, the Word speaks anew, live and lives among us. The Word of God is not, thank God, chained. Today, my friends, we remember. We remember Jesus Christ, raised from the the dead, a descendant of David, We remember that the word of God is not chained. That God speaks and worlds are created. That God speaks the word, Jesus Christ. And there is healing and forgiveness and love and mercy and salvation for all. That in the waters of baptism we have been clothed with life after dying to sin and death. Today we take and we eat And we drink Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, who is poured out for us. And all done in remembrance of Jesus. My friends, we remember that if we are faithless, Jesus is always faithful. Because that's who he is. The word unchained. Loose in the world. Amen.